I come before you pleading the election of a man whose one ambition is to see these 26 states fulfill their destiny as a nation. <laughs> to see the stars and stripes floating from the Atlantic to the Pacific. Over Oregon. You're right, my friend. Over Oregon. Yes, my friend. Oregon. 2,000 miles from where we're standing tonight. A land of new hope and a glorious future for the thousands who will settle there and make it a part of these United States of America. But the settlement of a vast and uncharted wilderness is not the only issue in this presidential campaign. And it came to me like a flash. I can go out there and take Sonny with me. But, Nan, why don't you wait a couple months? Maybe I can go. I'm not going to wait. No grandparents can keep my child from me. Well, you can't go out to Oregon alone. Oh, be a good brother and see things my way just once. You seem to forget that Mother came out here in a wagon with five children to look after. I guess I can take care of one. Did you ever think what would happen to you if you were caught doing this? Well, I saw the whole family at the political rally. Sonny must be at the house with Mammy Lou. I can handle her. And there's nothing I can do or say that will change your mind? You can do one thing for me. You can get some of my things packed. I'll be back in half an hour. Wellington. You ain't stealing that child, is it? He's mine. Who has a better right to have him? Man, the Gaussian. What I'm gonna get for this night's nice work. Personally, it's nothing. Get up. He'll never get them chickens to Oregon. No one that's gone from here so far has taken chickens. Well, I am. Goodbye, Papa. Goodbye, Abby. Goodbye, Hetty. Goodbye, Pop. Pa, you hold out for the best price you can get. You sell this farm. There's going to be a lot of people going out to Oregon in the next few years. No, sir. Indiana soil is good enough for me. To. Oregon? <laughs> I guess I'll just buy the home and own the whole state of Tennessee. Seems like everybody else is a hank in the move. That country out there will have to be settled if we want to hold it with all this trouble over the boundary. Where are they leaving from? The first wagon train leaves from Independence, Missouri in May. It ain't going to take you 60 days. No. <laughs> I'm figuring on blacksmithing a while before we leave. We can't do worse than we're doing here. So Pa and me, we decided we'd go to Oregon. Well, you got a nice day for it. Yeah. Yeah. Goodbye, Hip. Goodbye, folks. Steady now. Let her turn. Well, if I ain't missed my count, that makes 50 wagons I've worked on the last two weeks. Hey, wait a minute up there. What's the matter now? You're overloading that wagon. You're apt to bust an axle. Well, looks as if we're going to get away today. Where's that sawmill machinery? Up ahead. What's that they're lugging across the country? I hope the fire engine works when we get it out to Oregon. 
Well, we might throw a match into that load of kerosene and give it a try. <laughs> no, they put that stuff in lamps and light a whole house with it. No. Yeah, seen it done. Where's Clint Bellman? Haven't seen him since early this morning. Well, you better line up these wagons and tell everybody to keep their places. Honey, you stay there and keep quiet while Mother finds out what she has to do. All right. Can I do anything for you, ma'am? Uh, how do I join the wagon train? Why, uh, the registrar's office is right over yonder. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, that's all. Four drivers, the Beaver Forks trading post only. None of you taking up land. That's right. Got all your supplies and equipment? Yes, sir. All approved. Sign here. You claim two sections of land when you get to Oregon. The government gives you that free. There's a lady waiting here. A provision for government financing for the first three years. Thank you. I'm all fixed. Sign here, please. with it here. I'm going to Oregon. That thing wouldn't take you to the South Fork of the Platte. I'm signed up. Who signed you? She said she had the proper equipment. What would she know about it? I can buy another wagon or anything else that's required. Just tell me what I need. He'll tell you. If the government wants to be responsible for you. Oh, no. Nothing like that. We'll have trouble enough without nursing lily white women across the Rockies. You've got to let me go. We won't take her. Who is that man? That's Clint Belmont. He's chief scout. He and his partners have contracted to take this party to Oregon. They're responsible. I'll buy anything you demand. That's the trouble, miss. You can't get a complete outfit around here. Are you traveling with us? I'm afraid of some stuff into Beaver Forks for the fur company. I ain't asking anybody to be responsible for me. Mother, can I smell now? Yes, Senator. Your kindness seems to have gone for nothing. Oh, you're not going with us? I guess not, with this outfit. Well, I can fix you up with a heavy wagon. How? Well, I'll tell you one of mine. Would you? Why, of course. How much would it cost? Oh, we'll talk about that later. Come on. You three partners are really the guardian angels of this entire wagon train? Yep. We got the responsibility of the whole outfit. Yes, ma'am. How romantic. <laughs> William O'Meary? Clinton Belmont, James Birch. That's you, isn't it? Mm. Any middle initial, Mr. Birch? Well, not to recollect of, ma'am, no. You're not married? No. <laughs> Any children? Eh? Oh, of course not. No. You're a squint-eyed old liar. A liar, eh? Yes. 
Want to make anything of it? Well, I... <laughs> Clem's always making a jokes on me. <laughs> He's one of my partners. I'm Mr. Abigail Masters. <laughs> I'm Clint Bellman. Who's that raw boned old heifer? Why, she's writing the history of our trip. And she's got the three of us in the book already. I'm originally from uh, Indiana. Hmm. Well, why am I from originally, Bill? I don't know. I found you starving to death in a deserted Indian camp. Should have left you there. I wish we had it, too. <laughs> well, you've been keeping yourself. Yeah, we'd have been on our way by now. What have you been doing all morning, you moon-eyed old calf? <laughs> I pay no mind to him, ma'am. He's out of his head this way a good part of the time. Come on, now. Let's get this party organized. You help these women hook up. And that's all. How do you know they want you hanging around? No, uh, I might be of considerable help to you in writing up for that dial, uh, that book. Oh, thank you, Mr. Birch. This wagon train is larger and better equipped than we anticipated. Bad for the future of our fur trade, Mr. Murdoch. There'll be no fur trade if the white man builds his house in Oregon. Of course, this immigration cannot be halted permanently, but can be discouraged for a number of years. And now is the time to do it. But we do not want bloodshed, you understand that? I understand the white man, when he wants land for which he gives nothing, he'll destroy anything to get it. You speak almost as an Indian. My mother was an Indian. My father, I never saw. I don't like white men. But I know they won't turn back for just that. There will be killings. We don't want that. Do anything else to make them turn back. But they must not reach Powder River. They won't, if I handle it my way. contracted to take them to Oregon. And I want the pledges of both of you that that's what we'll do. Now, Bill, now, wait, wait a minute. We ain't got time for none of your talk. Are you agreed? Then let's stretch them out and get started. Dry 
dry these dishes. You got a pitcher and helper, I'll leave you out in the prairie somewhere. Evening. And how are you lone women folks getting along? Marvelously, Mr. Birch. Isn't he absolutely indigenous, Hetty? Looks like any other man to me. So it be. So it be. Where'd you get all them big words at? Out of a book. She spends most of her time at it. Hmm. Well, the sound right takes you like to me. Uh, was you intending to take in the doings this evening? Yes, I'm going to sing for them. Then I won't be a-going. I always appeared at all the socials back home. Like this? No! Take your, take your finger like that. Oh, like this? No! <laughs> Tell me, where did you come from? Over there. And where's your daddy? Up there. What's your name? Clint, what's yours? Clint? <laughs> to you, Miss Abigail Masters, the Indiana songbird, and she'll give us a rent, a rent, well, she'll sing a song called, um, Snowy Daisies. P of G, please. I've just been learning the lesson of life, the song. 
her sweet lesson of loving with all its pleasure and all its pain been sadly sadly proving and all that is left of this bright bright dream with its thousand million phases is a bundle of letters with a pink blue ribbon tied and a bouquet of snowy white daisies the beautiful beautiful daisies the snowy snowy And thus forever throughout this wide world is love a sorrow proving. And all the life is sad, sad world is love a sorrow proving. For the life of some is far worse than death. And love a sorrow proving. So I bless my lot, though with vacant arms, and a bouquet of white withered daisies, the beautiful, beautiful daisies, the snowy, snowy I'm good, Miss Abby. Oh, thank you. Do you know whose boy this is? No, I don't. No, I don't know. I thought I told you you couldn't come on this trip. Is he, is he your boy? Where've you been? He brought me back. Yes, I know. Thank you. You're welcome. Too tired to unhook your team? Oh, no, I... What do uh... you do when the going really gets tough? I'll manage. You must have pretty good reasons for making this trip, having no men folk. But I have. My husband, I've got to join him. Where is he now? He's in California, or he will be. He has business interests in, in San Francisco. I don't need your help. These mules do. They ought to be staked out. I'll get one of Mr. Murdoch's drivers to unhitch them, if I need to. Murdoch's taking you under his wing, has he? Well, he sold me one of his wagons. That's his wagon right behind yours. Delmut! Clint Delmut! Yes? Bill wants you. Good night, Sonny. Good night, Clint. Don't forget this! He's my partner. Now, young man, you get yourself to bed. Goodbye, Mom. Good night, darling. Good evening. Good evening. How's everything coming? Fine, thanks. Good. You and John stay right in here, Lester. Right here. Clint Belmont said to put two guards in between these wagons. You men unhook this woman's team for us. How does that tune go, Chauncey? Wagon wheels, wagon Oh! 
States, the Santa Fe will be passing us in a few minutes. I can stop it for you and the boy. Why don't you take it? You can't stand what's ahead of us. Don't you realize we'll have to break trail all the way to Oregon? Here comes the Santa Fe stage! This is your last chance. You have no right to meddle in my affairs. I won't again, ma'am. Fancy, ain't she? Must be making about six miles an hour. Yeah, we don't make over 12 miles all day. Good luck, Jim. Nothing but horror and hardship. Abby! Yes? Scarcely a man has slept in two weeks. Seen anyone hanging around them chickens? No. Getting plenty of history to write about these days. It's horrible. We'll be shut of these varmints as soon as we strike the mountains. Somebody's been stealing my chickens. More than half of them's disappeared. So a lot of horses and mules. I might be interested in your chickens. If you could hitch them up to save a couple of wagons we've got to leave behind. Better put that candle out as soon as it gets a little darker. Where'd you get the chickens? Prairie chicken. They grow them big out here. The size of fowl is ingenious to this region and locality. Hmm. But at first you might have stole it. Huh? What do you think of this? And I was saving the white meat for you, Bill. And keep after him all night. All right. Hey, wake up. I ain't had a wink of sleep in three days. Stop one of these, you'll get plenty of sleep. Hi, Grant. Hello, Sonny. You better get him inside. It's safer. Oh, I told you what I'm going to do. I'm turning back. Let me be. I can't take, take me. I'm take turning back. Bill, take care of it. I'm turning back. I tell you. Get that wagon back in line. I'm turning back. <laughs> Bellman said nobody was to go out at night. Well, I did. And some of them savages didn't plug you with an arrow. They didn't. That's the fifth man they've killed tonight. That arrow weren't made by any tribes that have been after us. Seems to be working. They get scared stiff. Gather the boys about. Talk up the idea of going back. What's going to happen to us, Belmont? I'm for turning back. And we'll go with you. And my wagon will be right behind you. What good would that do you? Well, it might stop some of these attacks. What makes you think so? I know it. They'll always fight settlers. How much 
more of this train that will burn up tonight. Wait, camp. We're moving on tonight. The women can drive and give you men a chance to sleep. <laughs> got to move out of here before they burn us out. Ken Murdoch says it's going to get worse. Yes, he knows this country about as well as you do. And he's been lying to you. Well, if we hook up, we're turning back. I tell you, you'll never make it. I've got more to lose in this outfit than any man here. My wagons are turning back in the morning. Nobody's turning back. I'll give you 15 minutes to hook up. All right? Get started. Under their blankets of snow. The yeah, air's so thin up here I can hardly breathe. <laughs> Where'd you get that coat, Sonny? Grandpa gave it to me. Sonny, Mr. O'Meary is not your grandfather. Then I, I can call him Grandpa. Set her up, Sam? No, but it'll take time. We're going to camp here until tomorrow. Evening, Miss Hep. Say, are there any Indians in these mountains? No, not till we get down by the river. How much sell two more of my chickens? Yeah. Maybe it's these immigrants. They're running kind of low on fruit. It looks as if that's what happened. What would we do if the food were all gone? I don't know. A bunch of trappers got in that fix once, and and they just at each other. Horrible. I don't believe it. Jim ought to know. He's the sole survivor of that party. <laughs> okay. Mother! Yes? All right, Sonny. I didn't hurt your hand, did I? Nope. This Lily White's all right. It won't snow tonight. Why the shelter? It's my birthday. No. How old are you? Four years old. Mom's gonna make a cake for me with real eggs in it. Mm. And Hetty gives the eggs to us. Am I invited? Sure. See you later, partner. Blow out the candle.
try and get it away from him. Won't you have another cup of coffee before you go? Well, no thanks, I... I haven't been such a bother to you, have I? Well, there have been times when... When you wished I wasn't alone? I didn't say that. But you were plenty determined. Did you ever wonder why? I knew you were running away from something. I was. When my husband died, his people took Sonny away from me. But I got him back, and that's why we're here. I love that song. Starting down the west slope of the Rockies tomorrow morning. That will be exciting. Yes, ma'am. Good night. How long will it take these wagons to reach Powder River? Oh, about a week. You got plenty of time. This rain will hold him here several days. Who's the factor here? Monsieur Mosley. You will find him in his office. After who, Monsieur? I'm leaving early tomorrow morning. Yeah. When do you want that freight checked in at the storehouse? I'll be over in a little bit. Mr. Mosley, your boy told me I'd find you in here. My name's O'Meary, Jim Birch. I'd like to rest up here for a few days. And maybe do a little trading. Uh, usual business with trappers, but you're welcome to stay as long as you see fit. Uh, will you join me in a little drink? <laughs> I've been pretty dry for the last five months. Tony Wellington? 
Are you the boy that's been stealing Aunt Hattie's chicken? What are you doing, Sonny? Give me that slingshot. Oh, he can't hurt them chickens. But he shouldn't be doing it. Well, I know what happened to that one anyway. Hand it over, young man. Have I got to? Yes. Well, then I won't tell you the secret. What secret? Well, it's a very good secret. What is it? Come over here. Where's God? Where did he go? He told me that I forgot. He told me just to tell you. What? Dad. Oh, Sonny, what did he tell you? Remember? Well, he'll be back in four or five days, and he'll have to tell you where he's been, because I can't remember. Tell him to be ready when half the wagons have crossed the river. Then pocket them. You understand? Tell him they'll be along in six or seven days. They've been hitting it up like this. <laughs> Most a week now. Ever since the wagon train got reined in. Like a lot of sailors just getting in the port. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbearable. And you ought to do something about it. If you can't control your men, folks, how do you think I'm going to? Well, a bottle of whiskey will cost you a barrel of flour. Why, that's the same as robbing a man. Suits me, brother. You can take it or leave it. Well... All right. Jerry, a bottle of the best. Was he right? Yes, it's Murdoch. And we gotta move out of here right now. In all this mud? Well, that's easy on fighting Indians all the way. Hello, Clint. <laughs> that's been going on for days. We'll have to start moving somehow. You can't do it. But we're the only ones who's sober. All right, the women can drive. Come on, let's throw the men in the wagon. Jesus Christ! That's enough for you. Let go of my arm. The train's pulling out. Helmet's giving us orders. Let him go. as soon as you can.
Excuse me, Clint. Where's man Welling? He's on the other side. Get those fellows straightened out. Because the one on the bus. Things are getting bad across the river. Looks like they're just over now. Give me real car to get to the side. You stay here and hold out as long as you can. on this side. If they get across the river, the whole caravan will be wiped out. Cut your horses. 
is loose and start swimming. Give me your gun. Give it to them as they come by. Come on, let's get them. take you off our hands. We've landed you in Oregon, and we're done. Thank goodness we can stay in one place for a spell. You'll have to file on your claims in the same order that you signed up at Independence. Then you'll have 30 days to file on your two sections. <laughs> it won't take me any 30 days. to take up a homestead. I'm willing to marry you, Jim Birch, but you've got to write to my father in Indiana. Ask for my hand. But it takes a letter a year to get there and back. I can't help that. It's proper. Here. But Abby, I can't write. <laughs> Say, what's going on here? I'm just getting cleaned up for our wedding. Then you're going to take me on as your dad? Sure thing you can do this. Okay, Brainer, can you do this? Perhaps the church and there's the people walking in and see the people? <laughs> <laughs> 